I was glad when they said, go to the house of the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. this morning. We're trying a new microphone. So bear with us if we have some little blips in the sound here. They might tell me I have to change my microphone halfway through the service and figure it out. It'll be fine. Um, I have several different announcements. Um, First, I want to remind you that next Saturday afternoon at 4 o'clock, um, as part of her long farewell to us, Janet will be um, giving a recital to say goodbye. Um, not to say music, but secular music, too. Um, there will be some fun stuff, some show tunes, um, and a little bit of her testimony about her call to ministry and what is taking her to Austin Seminary and what her plans are. Um, we will be able to receive a free will offering at that time. And um, okay. we'll to make sure that you can be here for that special time and then um, uh, uh, reception probably in Scott Hall. So that is next Saturday at 4 o'clock. Also, um, I want to remind on Tuesday at 5.30, the committee, uh, the community committee will be meeting, followed by the education committee at 6.30, and we'll be meeting in Scott Hall. And, let's see, also you have in your bulletins the attendance cards. If you'll take a minute to fill those out, if you have prayer concerns, you can add those to the other side of the card. And um, those will get to me and to our prayer committee. Um, but also, this is how we keep track of who is in church on a Sunday. So um, please let us know that you are, you are here. Um, neighbor Nights is coming up starting the end of the month, Tuesday, Tuesday, Thursday of uh, July 31st through August 3rd. So you want to come and plan to join us for dinner in the with a fellowship and formation program for that. And this afternoon, we have how many kids that are headed off, headed off to Camp Rejoice? Five of our young people that are headed off to camp this week at Kirkmont. So we want to be in prayer for them and um, Camper Dave Bartley and all of the staff that'll be working with them this week, that they'll have a wonderful week at camp. Uh, Hey, Jen, what are, you, what are you doing this week? Anything exciting? Well, probably do some gardening and um, some packing and some cleaning, but I've been waiting since Pentecost for this film series to start at Christ Presbyterian Church. Film series? What? Yeah, there's a film series. Is there going to be popcorn? Oh, yeah, popcorn. Okay. So, you know, yeah, when mine too. Wednesday, so I'll be here Wednesday for this film series. Okay, what time does it start? You've got one minute. 6.30. 6.30 and there'll be popcorn. Will you be there? I'm going to be there. Do you know what the I'll see you is? there. The movie All Saints. All Saints. It must be about me. Well, um, yeah, I think it might be a little bit about all of us. So join us Wednesday for All Saints and popcorn. That sounds like fun. Thanks, Jen. I think those are all of the announcements that I have. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship.
Good morning. Let us begin with a call to worship. Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary, and I will give you rest. Let us accept Christ's invitation. In the Reformed tradition, when we worship, we confess not only our own sin, but that of the world, in the confidence that God's grace will abound. God is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. Knowing that God is compassionate to all, let us confess our sins. Let us pray. Faithful one, despite your efforts, we have not lived up to what we can do or who we can be. Even when our intentions are good, our actions cause harm. Even when we want to follow you more closely, we end up turning away. We are at war with ourselves, and only you can bring peace. Still our souls, order our steps, guide our feet back to your way. God upholds all who are falling and raises up those who are bowed down. Jesus Christ rescues us from sin and death. Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord.
May the peace of Christ be with you all. Please turn to those around you and offer a sign of the peace. Let us pray. Holy, holy, holy one, guide us by the spirit of truth to hear the word of life you speak and to give all glory, honor, and praise to your threefold name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Our first lesson is from Zechariah chapter 9, verses 9 through 12, and Matthew chapter 11, verses 19 through 19, 16 through 19, and 25 through 30. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem and the battle bow shall be cut off. And he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore you to you double. But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another, we played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking and they say he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard a friend of tax collectors and sinners, yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hid these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. I invite the children to come forward for a time just especially for them. here but don't get too comfortable so um it's baseball season does this look like a good bat not really not really um you know what these are for you guys will see a lot of these probably coming up because you're moving 
and they are the crossbars for uh, a wardrobe box. Um, and since we are still unpacking, I have an abundance of them, and I'm happy to pass them on to the next uh, folks who are moving. Uh, but he, this is what I want to do. I want to tell you about, did you hear what Ms. Newman just read? Did you hear what she said? You weren't paying any attention. Well, lucky for you, I was paying attention, and she read words of a story about Jesus that said, come to me, all you who are weary. Are you guys tired? You had some vacation last week? A lot of work going on at the house, right? Tired a little bit? No, not tired at all? Good. Good, because that means you can work this week. Um, so... The next thing he says is, take my yoke. My yoke is easy and the burden is light. Do you know what a yoke is? Yeah, an egg yolk, but that's not the same yolk. But it's, it's the yellow part of the egg, right? Yeah, it's also a really bad pun. I'm yoking. I'm yoking with you. Sorry. I'm sorry, I, it's, it's cheap. So, but I want to talk about what a yoke is. Do, have, have you guys done any farming at all in your life? Do you see the work that goes on, like the tractors pulling, you know, and doing all the things and the stuff, everything in the field? Well, back in the olden days, like when I was a little girl, they used horses or oxen. That was maybe back in my parents' age. And they yoked a pair together. So you'd have two oxen, right? So um, uh, Eden, come here and help me for just a second. So that's okay. I'm going to come right behind you. Don't be scared. I mean, be a little afraid, but not too much. Okay, so the yoke would sit on the neck of the ox like this. Can you put your arm up here? Over just kind of just kind of drape your wrist over the top here. Can you put your other one? Okay. Now, if I'm steering you, where do you want to go? Can you go anywhere? You can't go anywhere, can you? But if I direct you this way, you can go this way, right? And if I direct you this way, then you, but you can't go anywhere that I'm not telling you to go, right? Right. So what happens is this is called a yoke. Now, when they have two oxen, they want them to be pretty close to the same size. Can you help me, Russell? OK, I want you to stand next to Eden. Now, Russell's just a little bit taller, but I'm going to put the yoke here on you and put your wrist up. Nope, the other way. Can you? There you go, up behind. And there you go. OK. So same deal goes like this. Now, now I have a pair of oxen and a yoke, and I can tell them to go forward. I can tell them to go this way. And ooh, I can tell them not to run over Atlas. But I can only direct them. They can only go where I direct them. OK, thanks for your help, you guys. So this is the work of a yoke. It's how we get direction from Jesus. So when he says his yoke is easy and his burden is light, the yoke is just to love one another. That's all we have to do is just love one another and show care and compassion and kindness. And that will be our guide. That'll be what directs us through life. Can you remember that? Excellent, excellent. Let's say a prayer. You say a line, uh, I'll say a line, you say it after me. <laughs> Dear God, <clears throat> thank you for this day. Thank you for the gift of yokes that we find in eggs, bad puns, and farming. Help us to take up your yoke and strengthen us to love the world. Amen. OK, you go back and sit with your family. Thanks for coming.
The responsive reading is from Psalm 69, verses 1 through 18, and it's in the Bible pew on page 569, if you would like to follow it along. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and his compassion is over all that he has made. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your faithful shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power to make known to all people your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his words and gracious in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them your food in due season. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. The Lord is just in all his ways and kind in all his doings. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desire of all who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord, and all flesh shall bless his holy name forever and ever.
from Paul's letter to the church at Rome. He writes these words, For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh, sold into slavery under sin. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I hate what I do not want. I agree that the law is good, but in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that dwells within me, but it is in my flesh. I it's right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with my mind I am a slave to the law of God, but I am a slave to the law of sin. The word of God in scripture, the word of God among us, the word of God within us, thanks be to God. Let me tell you, the struggle is real. Every morning that alarm goes off and I hit the snooze. Nine minutes later, the alarm goes off again. I hit the snooze. Ten minutes after that, the alarm goes off, and then the second alarm also rings, and I hit a double snooze. The struggle is real. In my mind, I want to get up and get a good jump on the day, but in my body, I want to stay snuggled in my bed. The struggle is real. And all of you know what I'm talking about. Thanksgiving dinner, that once a year meal with turkey and dressing and mashed potatoes and gravy and cranberries and sweet potatoes and cornbread stuffing and pumpkin pie. And oh my goodness, that first plate heaped like this and it was so good. Oh, I want to go back for seconds. And in this case, the mind is willing, but the flesh is stuffed. It's probably a good thing to listen to that, but the struggle is real to not go back for that extra helping of potatoes. In my family, was, what do you want for dinner? And I would say potatoes and potatoes. As long as there were potatoes and potatoes, I was a happy camper. The struggle is real. And Paul resonates with this because Paul says, here's the deal. We have this thing that is the law. It's the law of Moses. It's the law that we have learned from infancy about you will do this, you will do that, you will do the other thing, but you won't do any of the rest of these things because you won't. And yet, all of a sudden, all of the rest of those other things become very interesting because we can't do it. For example, in the garden, the man and the woman, you can eat the fruit of any of the trees except that one. And all it took was the slightest suggestion to the woman to say, you will not die if you eat that fruit. 
Look at how lovely it is. Look at that one piece of fruit that's just hanging there, just begging to be tasted. And the woman takes the piece of fruit and she takes a taste of it and then she offers it to her husband. So it begins, the struggle is real. Knowing what we should do, knowing what we should not do, well, what am I going to do? The struggle is real, and Paul knows this, and he writes to the church in Rome, and he says, everybody deals with this. It's part of being human, but seek out what, what looks like those and even when you fail when you hit that news one too many times in the morning and you race out the door with your hair on fire and soaking wet all at the same time to make that meeting that started five minutes ago you know grace that abounds As Christians, as followers of Jesus, we delight in that law and command to love our neighbor and to teach and preach the gospel of God's love and of God's grace. And that no matter how far we wander into sin, God is there like a lighthouse beacon to bring us back home. It is not temptation that is the problem. It is the giving in to temptation that is the problem. And I'm telling you, I know this because the snooze on my alarm clock is worn out so that you cannot even read the word that says snooze. It's true. The struggle is real. Now, I don't think Paul has a problem hitting the snooze button on his digital alarm clock. I know that because they didn't have electricity back then. But Paul had other problems. Paul thought he was being a good person and a good Jew. At the time of his conversion, you remember what he was doing? He was persecuting those who were following Jesus, minding their own business, loving God, loving one another, and interpreting a closer reading to God's law. And for that, Paul persecuted them. The struggle was real for him. He knew in his mind what was right, but in his heart, God was at work saying, Saul, Saul, what are you doing? Turn back to my way. And it took about with blindness and an encounter with somebody who knew more about faith in God and the experience of this than he did to learn what it meant to follow the commandment of God. He learned what it was to put on that yoke of Christ and go forward into the world as an apostle led by God's love and God's law. Decisions became a lot easier for him and struggles, well, they were still struggles. He just knew that was walking with God for that. We know that the struggle is real because for humans we don't always know who or what we can believe it's itself and Jesus says this to the people in the reading from Matthew. He says what will I compare this generation to? It's like children who sit in the marketplaces 
calling to one another. We played the flute and you didn't dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. We can't please you. What is it that you want? Likewise, his cousin John came ahead of him, clearly a different kind of guy, wearing skins and eating locusts and wild honey instead of the customary robes and sandals of the time and the glorious not eating or drinking, simply proclaiming, and you didn't want that. And now the Son of Man is coming, eating and drinking, being with you and among you, and you call him a drunkard and a glutton, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Jesus says, you can't have it both ways. And the struggle is real. What will you believe and what will you do? And he prays this prayer in the hearing of the people. Lord of heaven and earth, I thank you because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. It is just that simple and yes friends it is just that complicated we must be led by love the law of god is rooted in love and reconciliation grace is given freely through the work and life and death of jesus the struggle is real. Come to me, all that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest, Jesus said. Take my yoke upon you and learn. I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy, and my burden is light. When we take up that yoke of guidance by God's love, there is no room for us to carry other bags. Let go of our sin. Let go of the things that hold us back and weigh us down and focus only on carrying the weight of God's love into the world. Live into that love. And the rest of our burdens, well, they don't seem quite so burdensome. That doesn't mean that temptation is not lying around the bend. That does not mean that we will never, ever struggle with another thing ever again in our lives. Just ask anyone who has been to seminary, and there are several in this room who have been to seminary and others on their way. The yoke is easy, and the burden is light, and the struggle is real. But my friends, Paul is advocating for us to be aware of our own selves. We know that the law is spiritual. We know that we ourselves are only human. We don't always understand what we fall prey to. We don't even understand why we hit the news button for the 14th time in the morning. We know that we can want to jump out of bed, start the coffee, fix a good breakfast, and get a jump on the day. And we also know that five minutes more snuggled down under the blankets would maybe be just the right thing. And then five minutes more after that, the struggle is real. But what Paul seems to be getting at here is to say, embrace your own humanity. Yes, struggle is real and you're going to fall prey to sin. It's going to happen, period. 
but check in with yourself. Pause, take a breath and say, what is it that I am doing in this moment? Is this what God wishes for my life? Is this how I should be doing things? And if it isn't, make a change. Check in with yourself. Which law are you giving into? Are you giving in to the law that is the yoke that guides our hearts? Or is it the yoke of sin which reaches out for the snooze button yet again in the morning? Happily, after having lived for nearly 15 years in the central time zone, my body is starting to adjust being back in eastern time zone. I will learn how to control that urge for the snooze button. And there will be days that I do better than others and get right out of bed and get going. And yet there will be others when I will turn the alarm off altogether and say, and this is what's more important, is that I rest in the Lord. My friends, be in touch with yourselves. Understand what is going on. Take a breath. Acknowledge. Connect with yourself, with whatever your truth is, and then engage with We call it the ACE exercise. Acknowledge, connect, engage. If ever you come upon me and I am seemingly with my eyes closed trying to take deep breaths, it's a good that you've caught me. Acknowledge. Connect, engage, acknowledge what is going on. The alarm is going off for the 18th time. Connect with yourself. Is five more minutes really what I need or do I really need to get going? You really need to get going. Engage. Throw off the covers. Swing one leg and then the other leg out of bed. Put your feet on the floor carefully to make sure that the floor is still there. And move it. My friends, these exercises are important, but we can't do them if we don't recognize the struggle is real. Happily for us, scripture is full of stories of people who struggle. The struggle was real in the garden. The struggle was real for the people of Israel. The struggle was real when they found themselves in Babylon in exile. The struggle was real at the time of the birth of Jesus. The struggle was real in the early church, and the struggle is real today. Take a moment with God and say, how will you lead me today? And then take on that yoke and let God lead you. It is easy. And God's grace and love strengthen us and sustain us through this journey of life. May God add God's blessings to the reading and hearing of God's holy word. Amen. I invite you to please stand as you are able and let us sing together.
Let us declare what we believe using the words adapted from the Confession of 1967. The life, death, resurrection, and promised coming of Jesus Christ has set the pattern for the church's mission. His human life involves the church in the common life of all people. His service to men and women commits the church to work. His suffering makes the church sensitive to all human suffering so that it sees the face of Christ in the faces of persons in every kind of need. His crucifixion discloses to the church God's judgment on the inhumanity that marks human relations and the awful consequences of the church's own complicity in injustice. In the power of the risen Christ and the hope of his coming, the church sees the promise of God's renewal of human life in society and of God's victory over all wrong. The church follows this pattern in the form of its life and in the method of its action. So to live and serve is to confess Christ as Lord. Amen. You may be seated. <coughs> My friends, recognizing that God's love and God's grace abound in grateful response, let us now give back to God our gifts and our offerings. Will the ushers please come forward?
Loving God, for the gifts that you have given in abundance, we give you thanks and praise. Receive now, O God, these our gifts. Multiply them and use them for the mission and ministry of your church according to your will and according to your love. We pray in the name of Christ and all God's children say, Amen. You may be seated. Loving God, we come to you looking for quiet rest. Give us strength and courage, O oh God, to take on the yoke of Christ, to be led by your love, to experience grace, and to offer grace freely as it was given by your Son, Jesus. Lord, we pray for the world and for all who dwell in it. For those who dwell in darkness, let them see light. For those who seek safety from violence and war, send refuge, O oh God, and courage and strength for the living of these days. For those who live in fear, O oh God, Come alongside, send your Holy Spirit to bring comfort and strength. For those who are ill, O oh God, bring your healing according to your will and your way. Lord, we give you thanks that there are places where we can go for retreat, and rest, respite, and recreation. We especially are excited as we send our campers off to Camp Rejoice at Kirkmont this week. We ask your blessings on our young people as we send them, and on those that they will gather with throughout the week, and on the staff who are there to care for them, lead them, and help them learn more about your love in the midst of activity and fun. Grant them a safe passage, O oh God, and a wonderful week. Let them grow in your likeness according to your will. We offer our prayers to you, O oh God, knowing that you hear and answer each one according to your will. And so we offer our prayers in one voice using the words that Jesus taught his disciples to pray with the boldness of children. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. I invite you to please stand as you are able and let us sing together our closing hymn.
My friends, go out, submit to the yoke of Christ, be led by love. And we go out knowing that we can do these things because the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit will remain with us this day and forevermore. Alleluia. Amen.